Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a unique thermite, which has a special property of it being able to be cast into any shape that you desire. Traditional thermite exists as a metal and a non-metal. The most traditional thermite that you commonly see is an iron oxide material mixed with aluminum metal. In this case, the aluminum metal is doing a reduction reaction, an exothermic reduction reaction, of the iron metal, which produces a high impulse of heat along with molten iron, which gets up to the temperature of 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the reason why I call this traditional thermite is there's many other variants of thermite that can be made. And the aluminum isn't the only metal that can be used, such as copper thermite, which can use aluminum metal and copper oxide, which is one of my more favorite thermites because of the fact how much gas it produces sending copper plumes up in the air of a nice metallic copper metal. Thermites work off of a reduction reaction, which just needs to take place. A metal needs to be higher activity than the oxide that it's reducing. So aluminum is not only the only metal that can be used. Aluminum, zinc, magnesium, all can be used as long as they're more reactive than the oxide being reduced. And in that case, aluminum can reduce lead oxide, iron oxide, red iron oxide, black iron oxide, copper oxide, and the list goes on and on. And I recently obtained a bunch of random lab chemicals that were given to me. And a lot of them I wanted to see if I can make a thermite-esque reaction with. And a few of them were sulfates, so I started with the sulfates. I have yet to get zinc sulfate to work, but I did get copper sulfate to work once I made the anhydrous form because here it's the pentahydrate form which stops the reaction quite quickly. And this mix with aluminum works quite nicely. It reacts kind of like the aluminum thermite, but a lot less vigorous. And one form of the sulfates that I found was a calcium sulfate, which is a quite common material. It's found a lot of places in nature. Calcium sulfate to geologist is known as gypsum. Gypsum makes up your walls and many other things. One common use for gypsum is plaster of Paris. Now how they make plaster of Paris is they take calcium sulfate in the hydrate form and dehydrate it. Then they grind it up into a fine powder. This powder, once rehydrated, recrystallizes and forms large crystals which causes it to harden in an exothermic reaction. With that being said, it becomes a castable material. And by mixing in aluminum, you make a castable thermite. Now what I found works best is a two to one ratio by weight. So here I have 60 grams of the calcium sulfate and then I have here 30 grams. So once it's mixed up it forms 90 grams of the castable thermite. And now that we got our mixture all mixed up, we can transfer it over to something that we can add the water to. I like to use these small plastic bo bottles because they're nice and they don't stick to it and I can push it out and crack the plastic off and lessens the chance of breaking a nice beaker such as this one. Now to this, we're going to add water. Now normally you would add in 50, add in 100% by weight to the plaster of Paris. Now I don't want to do this, I just want to add in enough to make it into a nice slurry. Because if you add too much, then you have to remove that water in the later process. Because you need to dehydrate it once you hydrate it to get it to burn. It also loses a lot of volume in this step. Thank you. 
And now that we have our nice slurry, we can shake this down and get it into a nice puck. And doing this will also cause all the air bubbles to rise to the surface. The nice thing about this plastic container, a lot of the material on the sides likes to slide down and doesn't stick to it as much. Okay, we got our nice puck in there. And now I like to take something and stick it down into it to make a void that I can pull out later so that I can stick the initiator in there. It takes about 30 minutes for this setup, so we'll come back to when it's all good to go. Okay, here we have our block all hardened up. Now let's try to get it out of the mold without completely breaking it. And here we have our nice brick. Now, in the state that it is right now, it won't burn but we have to dehydrate it because we added a lot of water back to it. So we can just simply do that by throwing it on a hot plate. Okay, it's some time has passed and I have adjusted the temperature until we're all the way up to high to make sure all the water is driven off. We can double check this by using a beaker and placing it on top. If the water is still in there, it'll evaporate and condensate on the side of the glass and we don't see that happening. Let's shoot that over and throw a wet piece on so you can see what would happen if it was still wet. And you see how it turned white as the water evaporates. Apparently the last beer got a little too hot to have it condensate on the side. Now let's turn this off and give it some time to cool and we'll take it out back and ignite it. Okay, before we head out, we need a way to ignite it. There's a couple options that can be used, such as sparklers or magnesium. I prefer sparklers just because they light a lot easier. You can just take a torch and heat this up and get it to ignite that way, but that's unreliable and doesn't always ignite and sometimes takes a long time as this has a high energy to take to start it. Okay, now that we have our sparkler, let's head outside. Okay, here we are set up in the backyard with our sparkler in the thermite sample and then I threw it on an inverted pipe cap. We got our torch and then I threw on my very low density goggles so I don't go blind watching this. Let's light it and take a couple steps back. Now let's check out the aftermath. A nice glowing hot puddle. Now the camera really doesn't do it justice on how bright it is. If you've ever seen magnesium burning, it's a lot like that, but a lot brighter. It also burns for a lot longer than a little strip of magnesium normally does. I also filmed some clips from my testing and from night, so I'll throw those in now.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, post those in the comment section below. If you want to check out my social medias, the links are always in the description. I read all the comments, so if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. And if you want to support the channel, check out my eBay store, where I have different scientific stuff for supply. And every dollar that's spent there goes directly back to the channel for more exciting experience. And as always, thank you for watching and your support. Well, I don't know, but I've been told Uranium ore's worth more than gold I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep I got that bug and I can't sleep Uranium fever has gone and got me down Uranium fever is spreading